So uh, good morning, Emmy West. Welcome to uh, Sunday morning. I see lots of uh, blurry eyes and red faces, so good job. Um, up first this morning is supposed to be me doing a games presentation. I'm working out some technical kinks. I have to learn how to play the games real quick. Um, and then um, Lyle uh, is stepping in my place to show something which I think is pretty unique. It's a new application for Amiga OS um, 4 and 4.1, I'll assume. Um, and that is the score music application to drive MIDI files and, uh, and uh, let the, the Amiga make beautiful musics. So, uh, Lyle, if you want to go ahead and take over and get started. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Good morning. Why they put me first up on Sunday after a week of partying is beyond me. Um, last year, I had uh, the honor of showing an early preview of my score application. Uh, it's something I've worked on. It, uh, again, a MIDI application. It's original for OS4. Uh, last year when I showed it, I loaded and played one song and uh, was quite grateful that it didn't crash before I finished. That was the end of it. A year later, I haven't had a chance to move it as far forward as I'd liked, but it is going out to the public. And I thought this year I'd load a few files and show you a little bit more about the current state of score. It's not anywhere near finished, but I'd like to show you what it does, what it doesn't do. Um, and we'll go from here. Uh, the score application loads up. There's a little splash. I keep the splash as brief as possible because I have to live through it 30 times a day. Um, and again, this is the same app we saw last year, but I'll be able to show you a bit more about it. I'm going to load up a, a tune here, put my debug window out of the way. My main tracks window will show up with as many tracks as there are in, in the song. Uh, I also get basic clock controls here. I can click on the name of any track, pop it right open, and when we start playing, that will display the music as it goes by. Now, what I'm going to do this morning, we're, it plays music well. That's not a problem right now. What I'm working on is the various editing tools, some of which are in place, some of which I'm still working on. So I'm going to try to walk through what's available, what's working, what's you know still a little rough. Oh, let's see here. I grabbed the wrong track. Well, that'll keep things quiet. Last year when this showed, it was taking a very rough estimate at, as to which notes should be shown. I've just begun teaching it to break notes down into measures tied together. So you'll see a number of times you'll see two notes next to each other with a, a tie between them. This is just trying to get it towards being more correct musically. Um, We've just got a lot of different neat stuff going on. I'm going to go ahead and stop this for a moment and show you some of the edits that we have available. You see the notes over here are stacked as chords. Some are tied together. As I pointed out last year, we can transpose a note just by clicking on it. Clicking on it highlights it blue, and the mouse wheel will now transpose it up or down as you'd like. It adds the sharps, flats, whatever accidentals are necessary to keep it displayed properly. You can also select groups of notes and transpose them just as easily. You, again, you see the sharps and flats popping in and out. Um, larger groups are also possible. Any way you need to. Uh, when I first started this, the, the, the wheel, the mouse wheel was supposed to be an option. I've decided it's mandatory because every single editing app application I get to using the mouse wheel is just the easiest way to do things. Um, down here we can set the key signature. I handled this a little bit differently than you might expect. In normal music, shifting to a different key involves transposing up or down. The problem we face is that MIDI files, 95% of them don't include the key information. So we need a way to set the key signature without shifting the music. This is the way it's set up. When I set the key in, in score, what it does is changes what key it's displayed in without actually transposing the music up or down. If I click on the clef, you can see that the key signature is there. And by rolling the mouse up or down, we can go down into the flats as well. There's 15 keys available in MIDI, and that's how they display. So that's pretty easy to set now. Again, just click and go. Time signature can be changed just as easily. Set click on the uh, numerator or denominator, change it any way you'd like. You'll notice that as I change the time signature, the length of a measure, how many notes fit into a measure, changes as well. 
as also uh, how it divides the notes into beats. Obviously, five quarter is a quarter of a note longer than four four. Um, so we can change the time signature as easily as click and roll four sixteenths. Interesting time, but I don't know how useful it would be. So we can edit time signature, we can edit key signature, we can drag and drop. We have a toolbox. We can add notes if you'd like. In the, in the, in the uh, similar pattern as deluxe music, when you add notes, it'll push the other notes out of the way, keeping everything on measure boundaries or on measure beat boundaries. If I were to insert an eighth note here at the beginning of the measure, it would push everything else down by an eighth. Um, and there we go. And add another note, make a chord out of it. If you want more details on a particular note, all you have to do is click on the magnifying glass, take a closer look, it comes up with the track name, it comes up with the event time in both MIDI clocks and in measures, beats, and, or, yeah, measures, beats, and clocks. It comes up with the length of the note, again, in the MIDI format or in the musical format, and finally, status data one and data two are the three bytes that make up a MIDI event. In this case, that's telling us there's a note on, it's an E in the fifth octave, and the, uh, it, in the velocity that it was hit was mezzo, mezzo piano? Get that right. Sadly enough, I'll get to that in a moment, I'm writing this application having a blast. I don't know how to read sheet music. I, I do a lot of Googling along the way, and I'm hoping that musicians who play with this will give me some feedback as to what I might have got wrong. Um, you can set the intensity that the note's pressed here. Again, just pop up, choose what you want, and go out and click into the window. Um, this is the standard erase gadget from TB Images. What, what's it? Uh, AISS. Uh, most of the, many of the images, anything that's not straight out of the music font, uh, uses AISS images from, from Mason. He was gracious enough to uh, uh, provide those. I needed an eraser with a sharp point. The, uh, the standard eraser given here is not. So I asked Mason if he could come up with something. And uh, so I now have what looks like a pencil tool in the back with a nice white eraser on the tip, which lets me zoom in on a specific note to delete. It's very nice of him. I don't know how useful it'll be, but I can also use this as a drag gadget and erase blocks of notes. <laughs> they didn't erase. I have to work on that. <laughs> but yeah, thanks to Mason for the nice, uh, uh, the nice new eraser instrument. So we've got our notes, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes. Anyone who remembers deluxe music might remember this toolbox. When I first designed it, it was designed to look very similar to deluxe music. Uh, score was inspired by deluxe music construction set, um, which no longer runs on this particular OS. Now that I'm actually creating the editing controls, I'm finding out that some of these just aren't necessary anymore. Um, I no longer use the uh, flat, natural, and sharp to go out and modify a note after it's been set. It's much easier to just click on the note and roll the wheel. Um, so these will disappear. Some of the other uh, tools will change as we go. But basically speaking, I can just grab a note that I want to insert, come on out here and click, pops right in. Um, I can put notes in between other notes. Now notice that this quarter note was inserted across a beat boundary. So instead of showing up as a quarter note, it shows up as two eighth notes tied together. Again, this is just the, po the point in the rendering software that I've reached just now. You could ask Steve, two nights before uh, I left for Amy West, I was calling him saying, how do I draw a circular arc? It's just not part of the graphics library, so I ended up Googling how to generate that. And I learned a lot writing this stuff. So this is, this is score, uh, score right now. Um, the editing is coming along. You can edit the input and output selections for a track. Here I can determine which events get passed from the track out to the MIDI output, which ones do not. I can change the channel that it goes to. Uh, of course, there's 16 channels. It's the nature of MIDI. I can change the output destination to go to any uh, available CAMD destination. These are just some of the basic editings that we have here. Uh, what else do we have? You see in the toolbox, I can change the name of the track just by clicking in here and saying 
new track name. No problem. That's immediately updated here at the top of the window, uh, back here in the uh, tracks window, all in place. I can have multiple windows open at once. No problem. We're still not smooth scrolling, but obviously that's, you know, once, once the rendering is correct, what I want to work on is scrolling smoothly towards the staff in a sort of a horizontal Guitar Hero fashion. Hint, hint, that's coming. <laughs> but this is all just some of the fun. Let's see, what else can I show you? We have a new track. We can generate a new track from scratch. We just started playing with that. I'm going to quit and restart this before I do that, though, just because it's beta software. I know where the trouble is. We create a new track from scratch. Click it right open, and again, we can create you know, events right off the top, as I said before. Kind of neat. It, like I said, it's, it's reminiscent of, of deluxe music in the good old days. And I hope it uh, continues to grow in the future. What else can I show you? Let me think, let me think. No. No. That's, that's a good question. Okay, the question is when I add a note, does it tie it or not? When I, when I insert a note into a track, there's really three ways it can go, and the tying is separate. Uh, so I'll, I'll walk through all of this. When I click in to add a note, the first thing it, it looks is to see is, am I immediately above or below another note? If I'm, if I'm directly in line with another note, it's going to add it to that note and create a chord. A chord is just multiple notes struck at the same time. If I add it between notes, then it pushes everything to the right over by that distance. In this case, the distance of a quarter note. So um, that's handy because if you have a measure that has three or four eighth notes and three or four quarter notes back and forth, I don't have to enter them in order. I can come up and enter all the eighth notes and then go back and insert the quarter notes in between. You know, again, this is, uh, I, I've spent hundreds of hours in, in this program called Deluxe Music Construction Set. That's how it worked. Uh, what I do know about reading sheet music, that's how it came about. And that's what I'm trying to emulate here. Um, the tying of the notes has to do with the beats. Okay, this measure, this particular measure is 4-4 four, four time, which says there are four quarter notes in a measure. Now. The first quarter note is, in this case, two eighth notes. The second quarter note is two eighth notes again. This is actually a quarter note. You saw me insert it, but it's split between two beats. To, keep, to help the musician track what's going on, we separate. I'll get up and point for this. I can actually make sense. Let me go around the table real quick. We're going to divide this into four quarter notes. Two eighth notes makes a quarter. Two eighth notes makes a quarter. Two eighths makes a quarter. And the last two, so there's the four quarter notes that comprise this measure. It, for, to, to help keep the musician in tempo, we're going to break those quarter notes that cross a boundary up. Instead of displaying this as a single quarter note, it's displayed as two eighth notes because it starts in the middle of the first beat and it ends in the middle of the second beat. Because the duration of the note crosses that boundary, we don't display it as a quarter, but we display it as an eighth tied to another eighth. It looks like two notes tied together. It plays as a single note. May or may not. And, and again, and, and this, you're absolutely correct, and this is something that I'm in the process of. Okay, The, uh, the last time I showed this, it took a, a wild guess as to which note, which, uh, whether quarter, half, eighth, whatever, was the closest match, but it couldn't resolve below that, yes. so it was inaccurate. I don't mean, I mean, that, you know, even assuming that's exactly correct. Right. Right. And, and another one that gets me, I have, uh, in one example that I'll show you in a moment, there's, there's a, a quarter, an eighth, and a sixteenth and they tie across one boundary. Now, do I show it as a quarter, eighth, and a sixteenth, or do I show it as a quarter tied to a dotted eighth? Um, another flaw in this, because I just entered this, is again, this is one of the things I'm currently working on. If you enter a whole note, should it just display as a whole note that plays for the whole measure, or should it display as four quarter notes tied together? These are things I'm going back, I'm currently refining, I'm still tweaking it here and there. It'll never be perfect. 
but I'd like to get it as close to regulation sheet music, close enough to fool most musicians into being able to read it. You know, that's my, that's my, that's my goal. Part of the challenge here, in programs like Deluxe Music, you enter it as sheet music. It's recorded as sheet music. It's saved in a custom file format that includes all the details involved in these notes are tied together and this is how this particular measure should be notated. Deluxe Music had that. I, like a fool, decided that I'm only going to use standard MIDI files. So I can't save any of these notation details in the file. I'm only saving it as music and every time I reload it, the program has to scratch its head and try to figure out what would be the cleanest notation for it. Yeah, well, there, <coughs> that probably exists in both directions because something based purely on musical notation is lacking some of the details that you want to really play it properly as well. Absolutely right. You need something that sort of unifies both kinds of information. Absolutely right. One of the things I'm pondering right now as I, as I muddy through this, uh, how to display whatever comes in, um, when you watch, I'll play a few files, when you watch files play, some of them notate beautifully. When we were just playing Bach a moment ago, you know, there was a row of 16th notes just tripping all over the, the scale and it looked beautiful. But then if, you, if they play a slur of notes that are poorly timed, when I say poorly timed, I say according to regulation sheet music timing, it looks like a horrible slur of notes that any musician would choke when they saw. That's the trade-off I have to deal with when I'm, when I'm actually uh, trying to display a MIDI file. I have to be willing to accept whatever comes in and do my best to deal with it. Uh, one of the options I'm considering is to keep two representations of every note. There's the note that we'll play, and then there's the note that we will modify to whatever the closest beat is, you know, and make certain compromises in the display, which then may or may not match the actual note. All some of the games I'm playing is as the, in the evolution of this program, but all, all very good points. Uh, I love it. But yeah, the, so, so that's what that's about. Let me show you a few of the other tools we've added. Down here, of course, we have the standard uh, pause, play, rewind, uh, fast forward. I've added, uh, let's see, where are we? Back in the tracks window. I've made just a few changes. I had no means originally of controlling which CAMD output it was directed to. Now, for the longest time in development, the only way to set the CAMD output was to use a tool type when you start the program. I recently taught it to have a prefs window where you can actually set the default input and output here and, uh, and, and you're off and running. Of course, with CAMD, you just bring up a requester, it'll show you whatever's available. There's a couple extra connections here on the bottom called MIDI clocks and player control. Those are for other programs to, to interface with score. If I want to synchronize a receiver to, play, to, to receive on the same clocks that this is, basically to synchronize so we can play from this into another application. It can pick up MIDI clocks right there at that cluster and uh, the two mechanisms will turn in perfect sync. Um, player control allows me to take external applications and use them to press, play, pause, start, stop. All the regular MIDI controls can be received you know, over a port instead of just physically clicking on the buttons here. Think of it as an AREX port for musicians. Um, what else can we offer? If you picked up a copy of this program this weekend, we're giving it away here. Uh, I've got a few discs available. I've been handing them out. Please go into the icon and disable all the tool types. It does remember what your last settings were. It, does, it will remember your last directory for load and save only if you disable the tool types that I forgot to disable on the icon in the archive. So if you happen to pick one of these up this weekend, there's an instant upgrade you can do. Just go take out all the tool types in the icon and it'll behave much better. Um, we also have an about key here, which shows the, uh, my glorious logo and some information on version, build date, uh, a link to my website, all that other neat stuff. The about window, everybody has to have one. Nobody ever looks at it, but it's there. Uh, what else can I show you? What else can I show you? Not a whole lot at this point. Are there any questions so far? Uh, just one. Uh, the note on, note off. We're showing you the note on. Yes. Oh, that's, and I completely forgot to show you that. Thank you. If you take the toolbox uh, magnifying glass and take a look at a note, 
Now, this draws as two notes, but as we mentioned, that's just a quarter note between boundaries. It's a single note. If I click on that, I can see exactly when it happens, and I can edit it from here as well. If I change the time from, say, 240 MIDI clocks down to 237, see what happened with the notation? <laughs> I went slightly off time, and it's going crazy trying to compensate by tying minute notes together into an ugly thing. But yeah, you can edit from here. You can make, you make any changes you'd like. This is supposed to be a detail editor, and indeed it is. Now, if I change the time to something ridiculous, from 234 MIDI clocks to, say, 2003, 200, we'll go up in the 2000s. As soon as I hit Enter, that's an unreasonable request. I've told it to take this note and put it 10 measures down the line. So I get a little warning saying this will move the note out of this measure. I can cancel or I can say OK, and that note goes away. Poof, it just launched out 10 measures down the row uh, to somewhere else in the song. That's a great, great question. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, so yeah, some of these things, they, it tends to enter specifically on step time. But we do have the option of going in and manually editing and tweaking it any way we'd like. And I'll be enhancing those as we go. You can also insert a tempo change, uh, which is working, but it doesn't always display on the first click. Uh, if I forward and back on that, there we go. There's my tempo change. The tempo change always inserts at the beginning of the measure, because that's where it is most often. But again, I can use the detail editor bring up that tempo change, and change it to any specific beat that I'd like, anywhere I'd like. This is something that's interesting. Uh, tempo is displayed in beats per minute. 120 is a fair average. But the MIDI file format is capable of a much, much, much finer resolution. You're not limited to one beat. You can do 120.06 beats per minute. Very fine resolutions available. Most programs don't give you access to that. Most musicians don't care for it either. We have a course tempo setting here, which changes it one beat per minute at a time. But we also have a fine resolution that gives me fractions of a beat per minute. So the second slider here gives me an incredible resolution um, for fine tuning the tempo. Is it important to have it that fine? Not really. But it's available. It was easy to add. And the MIDI file format supports it. So. Absolutely. Now, many video musical applications also include SMPTE, uh, which is basically time code from video and movie productions. I might very well add that at some later point. I haven't yet because it's, it's not on the, the highest list. I'm still working on basic editing, but I'd like to add you know, time code support. Right. But another situation I'm talking about is you, you have some existing video and you want to take some piece of music and fit it to that. And you want to say this piece of music fits exactly this portion of the video. Right. So oh. So fine tuning the length of the piece. That's excellent. I'm glad I added that. Thank you. <laughs> I knew there'd be a good reason. Somebody would come up with a good reason for that. So score is still beta. It's still very early. But it is far enough along that we can load songs and start doing minor editing. Uh, it can be a lot of fun to play with. One of the things that's slowing down production right now, as the editor gets more comfortable, as it gets easier to just throw notes around, I'd rather play with it than work on it. You know, and as I'm sitting here trying to, to, to work out this or that, I'll grab a piece of sheet music, and I'll sit back, and I'll say, well, let's see. This is supposed to look like that. How's it sound? Play it back. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Let me put a few more measures in. That's a favorite song. And I'm going back to my old deluxe music days where I just sit and edit instead of, in, instead of uh, compiling like I should be. <laughs> but that's OK. I'm allowed to play. Uh, and this is just some of what's going on. Now, one, one other thing I'd like to mention before I go away. Score is free. It's, it's available. It has not been put online yet. Right now, the only way to get it is to come here to Amy West and join us. Within uh, a short period of time, hopefully within a week or two, it will go up online in something close to this state uh, as, as a free donation giveaway. But we're going to a new distribution method. Um, if you take a look up here in the workbench menu, there's an entry called Amy Store. Just clicking on that will bring up uh, a new uh, software distribution site that's been made available by the, the fine people at Amy Store. 
happens to be a, a AE on technology. This is where you'll be able to get the score in its beta formats. Hopefully, it'll one day graduate into an actual commercial program. But uh, I've had a talk with the nice people from Amy's store, and they've agreed to carry score for me. So that'll be the distribution method by which we can get it out to others. Any questions? Input. It will be able to record, because any good sequencer should. I haven't done that yet. That's definitely on the list of things to go. But you can see that I support input filtering here. Um, by the way, you're not stuck to just the default input and output. Each track can support, can, uh, instead of using the default, can choose any specific input that it wants, if you'd like. Uh, so you can do multi-track out to many more than 16 tracks at a time, live recording. Okay. Uh, for example, you select your track, and then you can assign, let's say, the bottom four keys. To, yes. You know, uh, quarter, half, and as you hold the key down, you punch another key. Boom! It puts in a hole. Move that. Boom, boom. Interesting. I never. I, you're working on the keyboard and not. That's that's it. That's a very interesting idea. Yeah, I've heard I've heard of Music X, but I've never played with it, so I wasn't aware of that. But the first thing that pops to mind is: Do I want to implement that in this program, or do I want to implement it as a CAMD tool that could be used in other places? Your choice, bud. Interesting idea. Uh, for, for the record, by the way, this of course uses CAMD. I am the author of many CAMD tools, and they all interact with this. If you wanted to see uh, an activity guide, exactly which instruments were being selected, anything else that, that some of the different CAMD tools support, all of them interact with this just fine. They all play happily in one big pool. Now that uh, Bars and Pipes Professional for OS4 is also adapted to CAMD, they're linked up as well. And again, getting back to the clock link, that's one of the things I'm looking for, so that you can play from Bars and Pipes directly into SCORE or vice versa. Without, even without file format, you could actually play live. It would appear as somebody playing, and by linking the clocks together, the measures will stay perfectly timed and everything else. Lots of possibilities in the future. I'm just excited to see uh, my old pal Deluxe Music beginning to be recreated here with uh, a higher resolution and some of the features that we've come to, to love in, in OS4 and GAMD library. That sound. Can I print it out? I, I, I don't have printer support right now, but everything here is rescalable. So I should be able to recreate this at any resolution. And that's part of the, that, that's a very important part. That's the most difficult part of printing, is getting, getting whatever you have scaled to the exact resolution of your printer. So the, the foundation is here to do it. And as printing, uh, as printer support continues to improve within the OS, I look forward to embracing it. That was nice, wasn't it? That was smooth. Yes. Yes, and that's, a couple of people have asked me, can we support multiple measures at one time? Right now, it will show one measure as wide as I drag it, which I find convenient, especially you know if you don't know the size of the monitor. The two different display modes I'd like to add is multiple measures wide, which will just be a gadget to select. Yes, there's no reason I can't support that. I haven't added it yet. The other thing I want to support is the ability to smooth scroll. So that, you know, so the clef and the time signature and the key signature stay fixed and everything else, <coughs> excuse me, everything else rolls towards it at whatever tempo the music's playing. That, that's going to be a beautiful horizontal scrolling. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely looking to support all these different display modes. Um, multiple lines? Multiple staves deep? Yeah. Well, that'll be necessary for, um, for printing. Yeah. But what would, what would confuse that right now is that each window is one track. It's one specific um, instrument or track out of the song. 
being able to display multiple tracks at once. I think it would be easier, actually, to just open what you want yourself. Um, you know, create another track. Could be dangerous. You could do it this way. They will stay in time because they're both driven from the same clock. So if you want multiple tracks at once, you should be able to just do something like that. And because everything's infinitely rescalable, you know, now that's going to make for a very long, thin, single measure. But you can stack them as deep as you'd like, you know, if you have need to see, where did my mouse go? Many things at once. I was really happy about being able to stretch things to any shape. So I would suggest that this would probably be the best way to get multiple tracks displaying at once. This would also be the only way you could choose which tracks show and in what order. But um, I'm open for suggestions. That's one of the reasons. Yes. Is there a documentation in the wiki somewhere? Ah, there is documentation. There is documentation. As I, I, I noted this morning, that whenever I get tired of just working on this for too hard, I need a break, I'll go back and document whatever I just added. So I've got quite a few pages of documentation in a text, it's a text file format. It's called ASCII. Ooh. Is that one of those new cross-platform formats? Yes. It's, what they've done is they've taken the Unicode character set and they've reduced it to just eight bits per character. <laughs> Seven, oh, seven bits per character. So it's a UTF-7. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Um, I have a friend who, man, who, who is just, he's a wiki fanatic. Everything he sees, he puts on the wiki. I mean, I think when he got married, his, he and his wife wrote their own vows and put them on the wiki. <laughs> Something like that. It's just, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so that, you know, 10 years later, if there's some vow that we didn't like, we can go back and change it a bit. Uh, all joking aside, uh, I'm sure these documents will be on the wiki. What, I, what I'd like right now from the betas that use it, there are a lot of bumps, there are a lot of rough spots that I'm aware of. I don't specifically need bug reports saying this particular feature doesn't work because if I put the gadget up there, I'm working towards it. But I, what I am looking for very much is uh, from, from whoever gets to use this is suggestions. Um, I showed this to a friend the other day and he said, you know, I realize a measure is that long. But as the, as the time signature changes, it would be great to have a little gray marker for each beat of the measure, um, just to help. Or a vertical line. Yeah, a vertical line. Just to help people see how the beats make out, both for the editor and the playback. One of my goals for this, there's this guitar hero type stuff that people play with, with a little plastic guitar that has six buttons. And uh, dots come towards them in a vertical format that they're supposed to match. One of my goals with this is to make it something that will help people learn to read music and learn to play music. Because it, uh, we're setting it up to go in a guitar format style, except that it's notes on a staff, not dots and stars on a track coming towards you. And instead of a plastic guitar with six buttons, it should work with any real MIDI instrument. So hopefully, ideally, in a dream I had once, um, Maybe school band directors might suggest this to their children who are learning to read sheet music. This would be a way to play with music and learn to sight read at the same time. You get practice playing your instrument, you get practice uh, reading sheet music, and you get to play it like Guitar Hero, all, all in one. I shouldn't use Guitar Hero, I suppose that's a brand name. Something similar to Guitar Hero except horizontal and using real sheet music. I think, I hope it has you know, a potential to go there as it develops a little further. Yes. Right. I do not at this time, and I haven't intended to, only because my, my, my specific goal was uh, MIDI file formats and sheet music display format. That's, that's the, the, the core behind this whole inspiration. Make it look like sheet music and make it read and write standard MIDI files. So while those could be added, and, and I, I, the more of this that I do, the more I appreciate how bars on a staff are so much easier to manage. Uh, wow, that, you know, so much easier than all the crap we're doing here. But um, it could be added in the future. 
you know, but my first goal is to get the sheet music pretty. Questions? Yes. Yes. Have you considered having a red cursor or something moving slowly across the line from left to right? That would work as well, but I'm afraid that when it got to the end of the measure, they wouldn't be able to look ahead to see what came next. So we'd have to, maybe if I should modify it to show like a measure and a half, so that they could always see that half measure ahead. I would be, as a musician, I'd be upset if it didn't tell me. The first note of the next measure, you know, by the time I could see it, I'm too late. <laughs> I already missed the rhythm. So uh, that, that's not a bad idea, though. I mean, all these different, once the rendering is down, and it, I hope you can see it's made some progress. Once the rendering is down, I can deliver it as many different ways as people ask for. Um, the red line, of course, you can extend to your multiple staff. Right. Showing various instruments. Right. At some point, too, it comes down to screen real estate. Um, this is neat to show how tight you can squeeze it. I wouldn't want to read that while I'm playing. Then again, I'm old and getting blind, so maybe that's just a shortcoming on my part. But uh, I like the fact that it's sc scrollable, it's changeable. It's, you can stretch it in any dimension and it adjusts to match. That was one of my goals uh, early on. More questions? I want to thank you all for taking a few minutes to come and let me show you my toy uh, again. Uh, it should, if, if you're here, come and get the disc. I have a, a little side note. My wife knows I'm passionate about this project, and many of you know I've been busy with other projects over the past year. When I told her I was coming back to Amy West this year, she said, only under one condition, you have to release score. I don't care if it's ready or not, you have to get it out to the people or you can't come home. <laughs> so I have lots of CDs available, folks. Anyone here who would like a copy of score, please. See, honey, I'm giving it away. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much. Yeah. And it didn't crash the whole time. <laughs> Last year, I was terrified. It's going down. Oh, that's just a debug window. That's telling me that it didn't see something in the, in the music track. This is a B-52 B tune called Reason, by the way. Absolutely. You have all you want. Reason.